question that we're asked by clients today is a question about what is shifting now that's cyclical versus what is shifting that is permanent. And so what we're going to do is try to pick apart just a snippet in these next 20 minutes of what we're sharing with a lot of our different types of community-driven clients and talk about how will the world be different after this downturn that we're working through. Let's back up to 1946. GIs come home from World War II and all of a sudden birth rates pop up 30% and then stay there roughly at that level for a period of 20 years. That was the baby boom. And so what happened with that? In the late 1940s, it was the explosion of suburbia, uh, Levittown, and other great developments that were built to accommodate the, the children of the baby boom. Fast forward to the late 1960s, you saw an explosion of demand in rental market, an explosion of supply as well too that took us into the 70s. Take a look at the ninth move in the 1980s, you started to see an explosion of redefinition of suburbia as they bought their, first, as they bought their second homes. Um, and then let's take a look at what happens in 1990 visually. That big bulge up at the top there is the baby boom. What we have there is the baby boom moving through the cycle in the 1990s, moving out of their 30s into their 40s. And let's map it out against certain types of housing product. First off, let's take a look at peak trade-up buying years. What we see at that 1980 is you see this big wave moving into peak trade-up buying years, which is what triggered that redefinition of suburbia. McMansions. Fast forward to 1995. If you'll notice, there's even a greater number that moved into that cycle of peak trade-up buying years. 2000 a much bigger bulge that moved up into the peak buying years. Notice that corresponds with the, when the uh, housing market started to accelerate at a much greater pace in inflation um, in a way that hadn't happened before. 2005, you see another growth, uh, big growth, but it's starting to subside a little bit. Let's take a look at 2010. We actually see that starting to peel back significantly. There's a much smaller pool moving into that specific period of time of purchasing real estate product. 2015, we see an even greater decline happening. So this is one of the things that can help us start to identify what's going to change in the marketplace as we get through this economic cycle we're in right now. But it's not all bad news. Take a look at what happens after that peak of the baby boom. There's another one coming through. In 2015, we're looking at the same kind of thing starting to happen with first-time home buying as we have a larger audience moving into that cycle. So this is one of the things that we track to identify what's going to, what do we know is going to shift in the future. And we'll one of the things that we're noting is that there's a dramatic mismatch between the expansion of trade-up housing inventory and the generation that's going to backfill and allow them to exit. As we take a look at that, what's happening is compare the baby boom to Generation X. Generation X each year, there's about a 10 to 15 percent smaller population. So it's a smaller market to start versus a market that grew 30 percent. Part of the mismatch is also stemming from there's lower household cash flow, as we saw in that last slide. They just don't have the same kind of purchasing power that the front of the end of the baby boom did. Another challenge is that in our survey work we're doing for our clients, we're finding that the generation moving into those peak trade-up buying years have less willingness to place economic value, cash on the table, on premium housing, premium lot, premium neighborhood characteristics. They don't find as much value. They don't want to pay as much for that. But we're also seeing that this generation moving in is more willing to place economic value on community characteristics. It's less about the home representing who they are. They're willing to place greater value on what's the community that surrounds them, which totally changes the game of what's happening in real estate as we think about the implications. But there's a third key distinguishing factor of Generation Y, which we think is actually going to be perhaps an even bigger factor in reshaping markets ahead. It's one that we're telling our consumer marketing clients will probably be the number one factor that changes their markets. And that is when we take a look at the gender differences in Generation Y. In 1972, 
men were 1.5 times more likely to earn college degrees than women. And it probably does, has a lot to do with explaining why the ratio in the audience is, looks like it's a little bit more than a 1.5 time ratio. Um, there's a new generation gap happening. What happened was, over time, women started catching up. But the surprise is that when women caught up to men, we would sort of assume that it would have plateaued, that they caught up, the gap was gone. But what happened was, women's education rates ended up continuing to increase at the same rate while men started dropping. So at this point, the real generation gap is that women are 1.5 times more likely, women in their 20s are now 1.5 times more likely to graduate with a college degree and or, or earn advanced degrees than men at this point. It's there is a gender gap in America where a woman who works full time only earns 79 cents on the dollar of what a man does who works full time. However, if you take a look at this generation where things have changed, we've found something different. The gender gap no longer exists, but they didn't just catch up, they've blown through the gender gap. Single women in their 20s now earn 108% of what their male counterparts can do in DC. It's a different world now. We're seeing this trend happen in every single city that we examine, um, where they have a knowledge base, um, employment base. It's, this is going to be something that's going to change a lot of things. Well, too. So just to recap this 20-minute snippet here, the key changes in the head for development that we know are more than just cyclical include you have the generation age, Y age wave coming through the pipeline, just as the baby boomers did, um, but add in the gender dynamics that are changing so dramatically. Another key change we talked about is the browning of America. The country is going to look a lot differently in the future than it does in, um, in you know, audiences that the, in, in, in some of the audiences that I speak to. Um, shifting income dynamics. We will not see the same kind of patterns that we necessarily saw in the bubble of the last few years. Um, economically, it's mathematically impossible to see that kind of structure that's, ha uh, that's happened. The graying of America. The baby boom age wave will change and reshape markets as well too. The challenge for a lot of organizations though is that everyone knows that one and everyone is rushed to supply that market which has actually created oversupply in a lot of categories. But what we do know is that those changes will shift real estate demand patterns with certainty. That these changes are more than just an economic cyclical reaction to the downturn that we've had. But what we see is that what's happened is the economy has only exposed a number of fundamental seismic fissures that were already in root and taking shape that we know will, will end up dominating the next decade. Now, the challenge with this is, as we look at the change of this magnitude, what we see in our economic history analysis is that it's the incumbents that are almost always the most challenged in responding to changes of this magnitude. In consumer markets that we track, we've noticed that market leadership tends to hang around in about 15 to 20 year cycles. Basically, there's a company that rises to ascension and then maintains there because they serve that audience that's moved into their peak buying years so well, but then it starts to wane over time. Um, they lose their grip in that. And what happens is that that's the opportunity where upstarts tend to be able to come in because they tune better for that audience moving into their, that generational shift moving in their peak buying years. And we're seeing that happen in industry after industry after industry as we look deeper into this.